Alright, it's 9 o'clock. I'll call the meeting to order. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I hope everybody's had a chance to go over the minutes of December 29th. There's new ones in your pile from the ones that were mailed out because the disaster declaration needed to get from Shannon and the contingency transfers are listed in there now. Got a motion on the floor. I'll take a second. I'll second. A second. Any other discussion? Here and now, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed say nay. Motion passed. Okay, we'll go to number four. Uh, presentation of plaques. I guess this truthfully should have been done about two years ago, but it wasn't. But I would like to give this to Phyllis for all your all the work you've done for the county. <laughs> and the second one was to the missing man. Dwayne's not here, so. Anyhow, all right, we move on. Old business. Uh, I think we need to talk about, yeah, that liquor license and old business. Might as well have JR and Tina come on up and... Location. Well, I don't want to deny it. There was it was approved, time. but I don't know if we went through the proper procedures to approve it. Because um, was the application all submitted properly? Signed, notarized, everything, and the fee was there on the data application. So, okay, there. And then um, the zoning. The zoning. Talk to the city of Mulbridge, and mm -hmm. as far as I'm concerned now, they don't have an issue. They've already the main thing we should have contacted them first because it's within their two mile zoning or whatever they're going to insert now one mile so because it's already been approved correct it was approved at the yep. meeting yeah and it was forwarded to the state so cities after i talked to the city they um contacted you folks and got all their information and they have no complaints right now so so we're all good yes Okay, great. Is it going to be brought up again next year? Probably. Then, or I would guess so. Probably. We need to notify City of Mobridge before we grant that because it's within their zoning. So when it comes up next year, we need to make sure that we notify the city. I guess I would think maybe you guys need to talk to the city too and see what's going on. What's going on, I guess. I wouldn't you do that? Yeah. Do, do we need a definition of being it's a county liquor license? And it's, it's a county liquor license, but um, but it's still within the city of Mulbridge's zoning control. So basically, they're going to control the business and the zoning that goes into that limit. That's where we run into the conflict. What do I talk to you about this then? The mayor and all that stuff? The city, yeah. Okay. Um, and the other issue we're going to have is um, if somebody comes in and asks for a liquor license in the county, this is going to create a problem. Because it's a non operational liquor license, to be honest. Um, and I'm just telling you now, it, it's going to cause a problem. I'm not saying that it will. 
And I'm saying if it comes up and somebody wants to know if there's more liquor licenses in the county, which there are not, um, this is going to create a problem. Do I get, do I get my uh, initial investment back then? No. Nope. Really? Nope. Anybody here want to buy it? I'm just saying that it's, all I'm saying is, is it's a non, technically non-operational license, which technically should not have been granted. Um, and if, if somebody comes in and wants to open a business that needs a on-sale hard liquor license, it's going to create a problem. I'm just telling you ahead of time. So if it does happen, you already know what's coming down the pipe. So it may never, but I'm just saying there's a potential problem. So yeah, it may never happen. I'm just saying that if it does, I'm letting you know. Things always happen. Yeah, things guys, always happen. You guys are actually running it in the summertime, aren't you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, private thing for in there. I, I'm not going to argue that. So we'll just leave it at that. Okay. Yeah. That yeah. Is there some stipulations that they can read how how that how that liquor license really should be? I mean, is it? It's well, I think the sales tax license is not year. its own sales tax license. It's under your business. Is that right? Mm -hmm. um, no, the sales tax license is. No, I filed two. One okay, you have two? Okay, so that's good. And then um, how often do they require you to file one? Every month. Okay. And, um, and if you have show income and expenses and tax, then I would assume you're okay. But what I'm asking is, is there something that says where, where that license has to be I would contact X amount of months a year? I would contact Peter. 90 days a year has to be operating. That's the stipulation for it. Okay. Well, good luck, I guess. On the last day. We're in good shape, then? I guess so. As for right now, yeah. Thank you. How do we go about changing the address if I want to switch it to a different building? So I can be over here right? forever. <laughs> that change form. Yep. Just gotta, the but then you're going to have to get, if it's on your property out in that area, it's going to have to go through cities only. Okay. So. And that way they know ahead of time rather than you guys just approved the liquor license. What happened is, is we got a, or I got a call saying, you just approved the liquor license for a business we know nothing about within our zone of uh, zoning, which created everything. And it's like, okay. Um, the other thing is, if they come in, we need to give out public information again. And that also creates. Here's what happened with that situation Katie called me and asked me if she could give out a copy of the liquor license application. I said, I don't know if that's a public document. I'll have to call and ask, what do they need off of it? And she said, she said they wanted the legal description. I said, well, just give them the legal description and I can call and ask when I have the time. I was taking care of my dying father that died that day. Well, I'm just saying what, what we asked Katie last time is not what you're telling us now. Well, she said that you told her not to give them a copy of that document. Until I was able to call and find out if it was a public document. Well, then that it creates problems with the city. It was not trying to withhold information. She said they just needed the legal description, so I didn't think it was Katie, something that Katie, what did they ask for? To be dropped. Did they ask for a copy of it, or did they ask for a legal description? They, they asked, asked for, for a copy. copy of it first, yes, and they said I wasn't sure. I had to call and ask. That just goes back. It's a public document. It's transparent. This is, goes back to what I've been telling you guys over and over and over again. It's a transparent document. It's a public document. we got to give it out because guess who gets called? Me. Because we are not giving out public information. Very little in this courthouse is not public. Other than third floor, adoptions, abuse and neglects, child issues, it's public documents. Give it out. That's all I got. This was a different circumstance. Well, I, I disagree because okay. I had to get called and deal with it. I'm just saying, we're a public office, give out public documents. Yeah, I would say the circumstances were quite a bit different. Well, I disagree. So we can leave it at that. Any other old business? You guys good then or for now? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Have fun. Any other old business? <clears throat> All right, then we'll move on to number six. Both office. Your first 
first, Jamie. <laughs> and I, James Hare. I, James Hare. Having been elected. Having been elected. To the office. To the office. County State's Attorney. Of County State's Attorney. Of Walworth County, South Dakota. Of Walworth County, South Dakota. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support. That I will support. The Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of South Dakota. And the Constitution of the State of South Dakota. And that I will faithfully and impartially. That I will faithfully and impartially. Discharge all the duties. Discharge all the duties. Of my said office. Of my said office. Of County State's Attorney. Of County State's Attorney. Been elected, having been elected to the office, to the office of county treasurer, of county treasurer of Walworth County, of Walworth Dakota. County, South Dakota. Do solemnly swear, do solemnly swear that I will support, that I will support the Constitution of Const the United States, Constitution of the United States, and the Constitution of the State of South Dakota, and the Constitution of the State of South Dakota, and that I will faithfully and impartially. And I will faithfully and impartially discharge all the duties, discharge all the duties of my said office of county treasurer, of my said office of county treasurer. Having been elected, having been elected to the office of county commissioner, to the office of county commissioner of Walworth County, South Dakota, of Walworth County, South Dakota, do solemnly swear, do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States, that I will support the Constitution of the United States, and the Constitution of the State of South Dakota, and the Constitution of the State of South Dakota, and that I will faithfully and impartially, and I will faithfully and impartially discharge all the duties, discharge all the duties to my said office of county commissioner, of my said office of county commissioner. Kevin Holgard. Uh, Kevin Holgard. Having been elected. Having been elected. To the office of county commissioner. To the office of county commissioner. Of Walworth County, South Dakota. <coughs> Walworth County, South Dakota. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support. That I will support. The Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of South Dakota. And the Constitution of South Dakota. And that I will faithfully and impartially. And I will faithfully and impartially discharge all the duties. Discharge all the duties of my said office. Of my said office. Of county commissioner. Of county commissioner. James Houck. Uh, James Houck. Having been elected. Having been elected. To the office of county commissioner. To the office of county commissioner. Of Walworth County, South Dakota. Of Walworth County, South Dakota. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support. 
that I will support the Constitution of the United States, the Constitution of the United States, and the Constitution of the State of South Dakota, and the Constitution of the State of South Dakota, and that I will faithfully and impartially, that I will faithfully and impartially discharge all the duties, discharge all the duties of my said office, of my said office, of county commissioner, of the county commissioner. Chairperson for 2017. Nominations. Nominate Kevin Holder. I would nominate Nominate David Simmons. to vote on it. She made another motion, but let's vote on it. Kevin Holder. David Seaman. <coughs> it is David. Okay, <clears throat> now we go to the vice chairman and I uh, nominate Mr. Hall. Kevin Hogart. Any other nominations? Nomination sees. Okay. All those in favor of Mr. Hawk? Mr. Hogart? <clears throat> Jim Hawk is a vice chairman. Information of uh, official county newspaper. You want to get in your chair? What's, what's that? You want to get in your chair? Or do you want to just stay there for me? Where chair? Be right here. Well, I think I'm fine here, ain't I? Yeah, you're okay here. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, what is our official county newspaper? Woolbridge Tribune and Selby Record. Okay. Can I have a motion to approve the uh, county newspaper? I make a motion to approve Woolbridge Tribune and the Selby Record. Second. I'll second. Okay, a motion has been made in the second to approve the Woolbridge Tribune and the Selby Record as the uh, county newspapers. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. All opposed, say aye. <coughs> There's a nation of volunteers. Do we have a list of that or what do we have on that? The only one we had on that was Leah's husband for helping with things that she needed help with. Well, that's still okay. Then, what do you guys? I think it's basically for insurance coverage. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. And what's his name? Scott. Scott Holder. Can I have a motion to approve Scott Holder as a volunteer? So moved. Second? Second. 
<coughs> All in favor of approving Scott Holder as a volunteer, say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Okay, approved. Okay, then the uh, Office of County Depository is that Shall be in Mulberry Um, we, It used to only be Bank West, but we need to change that. Um, Nyla, what all banks? We want all the banks in the county, so it would be like Dakota Bank, Bank West, Great right Western, and Wells Fargo. I so move. Okay. Second? I'll second. Okay. All those approved the counties and the banks in the county as the uh, official depository say aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. Okay, pass. <laughs> Appointment of positions on the county boards. Um, if you pull out these pages, <coughs> starting where the highlight is, you'll see all the boards. Who's on them at this time? Usually the new commissioner would take over the old commissioner's boards, but you guys may want to do some adjusting to those. Okay. <coughs> okay. Um, I'll have myself, it goes in Northeast, um, North Central Regional uh, E911 and North uh, East Council Governors and the jail and the highway department. We'll put into Hawkin as the highway department, Weeds, North Central RC and D, and then Northeast Council of Governors. Miller Investments in Finance and Ambulance, Insurance and Purchasing. Hogard Purchasing, Courthouse Maintenance, Warhawk Energy, Emergency Management, and Schilling Extension, Landfill and Ambulance. Yeah. <laughs> and get the rest of them to be the same. Okay. Okay. Oh, in this medical equipment, can we get in Mary Lou Buckland in? Yes. Yeah, she did. Do they come to us as a legion? Do they already come to us with a name or, or or how do they usually do that? I would have no idea who's on the legion of Zillary. We can contact them and find out. <clears throat> okay. Florence Cars, did she move? Mm -hmm. I heard she was going to, I didn't get the name. Determination of 2017 salary of the Walrus County Commission. I think it was the same as it was in 16. Okay. I thought that's what we were doing already. That's what we did last year. No. Or did we do it? We didn't. We did not confirm it for this year, so no. we figured the increase, but we can put it as what it was. I'll second that. Okay. The motion has been made and seconded to leave the salary of the, of the County Commission the same as it was in 2016. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Okay, passed. Okay, now I'll authorize the publication of a, of a complete list of the salaries of the county officers and employees. You guys have a list in your piles. Um, the commission will have to be changed to 10041.73.
will have to be changed again. Mm -hmm. That's what's in Do we have to have a motion for that? For the publication? Yeah. Yeah. I still move. Okay. Jim Hoff moves. Second? I'll second. Okay. The motion has been made and seconded to um, operate as a complete listing of the county salaries for the offices and employees. And it's been moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, say nay. Consider motion to adopt resolution WC 2017-01. Resolution to establish uh, office official fees, election of official fees. Okay. Nice move. Just the same as last year, Becky. Yeah. Superintendent, $10 an hour. Um, precinct deputy is $10 an hour. Court county board is $10 an hour. And election school attendance is $25 an hour. Okay. We have a motion to approve it. Yes, okay. No second. The motion has been made and in, in seconded to approve the resolution WC 2017-01 resolution to establish the election of officers' fees. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed say nay. Resolution WC 2017-02. Resolution establishing fees allowed by funeral director. That's $2,500. All those, uh, can I have a motion to approve that? I so move. Okay. Second? Second. Was there uh, any, did he say that was enough for this year? Yep, I talked to year? Eric. And he said that that was enough. He said they had an increase last year, so just leave it this year. Okay, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Okay, we have a, <clears throat> a resolution to establish salaries for elected officers. County Treasurer, forty three thousand three hundred and sixty one dollars and ninety eight cents. County Auditor, forty five thousand. 353.12. Register of deeds, 43,361.98. Uh, state's attorney, $77,987.94. Uh, county sheriff, $52,498.61. And county coroner, $83.23 per call. Can I have a motion to approve those salaries? That's a move. Second. Second. Okay. Okay. The motion has been made and seconded uh, to establish salaries for elected officers. All those in favor, say aye. aye. Opposed, nay. Okay, we have a, all the claims have been sent out. <clears throat> Does anybody have any questions with the claims? I make a motion. Okay, motion has been made to approve the, the uh, uh, claims. Second? Okay. Motion has been made and seconded to approve the claims. Um, 
All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. Monthly treasurer's report. Consider a motion to set a date for the sale by auction of a surplus real pro real property owned by the county. This is what we have. Or this is one that I put on the agenda here. We've got a list of yeah. The only one that we that came up last time is that uh, pie shaped lot in Lowry. Ryan finally got a hold of the Lowry Church, and they are willing to accept. Yeah, that. they agreed to accept the donation. So that's a little bit. Further on in the agenda here, I'll analyze that. But, uh, did you ever, did you get a response from the city of Moorbridge at all, Jamie, about uh, transfer those? They definitely want first dibs on what's in the city of Moorbridge. Um, they were going to talk about that. We're talking about the, uh, is it three lots? Yeah, the Saint Saint lots. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that are around that Saint Saint house in the south east corner of Moorbridge. Um, they're going to respond back to us on that, so um, I wouldn't set a sale date on those think, lots just yet. I think they'll probably be interested. Interested in, in those lots, yeah, controlling them. So basically, we just have two that we want to. Uh, and actually, why don't we approve all three? And if the city comes back and says we want them, then we can just, do then we can just pull that one right off and, okay. and deal with the city. But then so if they don't want it, we already have it motioned and approved to sell. Yeah, basically, we're just looking to. Uh, set a date for the sale and, and I guess probably put something in the newspaper here. So, so well, we got two go ahead and take a look at the, it'd be everything uh, below the lowly one here since we were able to. Uh, yep. Well, 10 days, I think. Twice over yeah. the course of 10 days. So yeah. it'll be two, two weeks. So, yeah, and then we'll just get a date. The other thing is, is there any other property that needs to be sold or any other? That we need to get sold on the share steps. Okay. You got anything coming up anytime soon for? You got any vehicles or anything to put in the sale or? Oh yeah, but I don't want to do that in wintertime. Just do it. Well, we need two, two rounds of publication, so let's look at, uh, and Deb just reminded me too that we should probably take care of the abatements on them, yep. which we'll schedule for the second meeting, which is the 17th, so we don't want to do it before that probably. So, so. like the 19th or so, 19th sure. or 20th. 
if I can get it in the paper, the deadline for Selby has already passed, right? So we're going to have to push it back further than that, even probably to the next week. So maybe the 26th. 26 would be good. Okay. Want to do it at what? Nine o'clock? Yeah, I think so. Nine o'clock. That works for everybody. Here or where? Steps to the courthouse. Yeah. Most of them are set at ten. Do ten? Sure. Let's do ten. Ten o'clock. Twenty-six. Yep. Okay, so I'll get the. We'll put the abatements on the next uh, agenda, so they'll be taken care of before that. But this way, I can type up an ad and submit it to the newspapers and have plenty of publication time before the auction. We're not going to put any restrictions on any of these lots. Nope. Unless you want to. The ones in, uh, I would assume City of Mobridge is going to want those three lots that are in Mobridge. Then we have a lot in Java and then a lot in Selby. We kind of talked about the Selby lot that we didn't want to put any restrictions on or or do we? It's kind of sound like last meeting, sell it as is was kind of the, isn't that kind of what the opinion was? Yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's pretty much common sense. It's going to tell you what's got to come down there. So, then we won't put it Talking in. Talking to sell everyone one's got Yeah. And um, is it a bare lot in Java? Yes. Yep. <coughs> Realistically, there isn't much to do there as long as they keep it mowed in BC. No, and the municipal ordinance should, uh, should dictate the whatever nuisance abatement needs to be done anyway. So. And if you don't want to run with any requirements on them, that's, that's totally up to you. But I think that the purchaser of that property in Selby is going to probably remove the right structures anyhow. So. But it's up to you folks. You want to put restrictions on it or not? I think I would just sell them as it is. That would be my recommendation, if that's what you're comfortable with. Okay. <clears throat> then I'll, we're um, making a motion for right now to have it happen on January 26, 2017 at 10 o'clock. Correct. With no restrictions. All lots with no restrictions. That is correct. Okay. Can we motion to that? Yes, okay. Good. Second? I'll second. Okay. Motion has been made and seconded to have January 26, 2017 at 10 o'clock the, the uh, date of the auction. Uh, we may, yeah. I just have one. Do we want a minimum bid? What if somebody wants to buy a lot in Java for a dollar? Well, that's what I want to know. That's what I want to know. As long as there's no, it's it gets it on the tax rolls. But I just wanted to make sure that. I think that's the most important. Yep. Let's get it back on the tax rolls. So because we don't want to worry about a minimum. We don't want them to bounce back to us. No. It's, so okay. never mind it. Motion has been made and seconded. To set the date for January 26, 2017, at 10 o'clock. All those in favor say aye. Right. Right. Opposed, nay. Okay. Okay, discussion regarding payroll. Ryan, did you bring that? What you had sent me, by chance? Um, I did not, but I, I got the copy of personal policy on my phone here. Oh, it isn't the right, the updated one, but I can, I remember enough that. Well, I can bring it out. Okay, if you can bring it out. Discussion regarding payroll. Yeah. Zeki uh, and I met with uh, Josh and Justin about some payroll issues. There's been uh, some questions that employees have had about payroll 
and some other issues that uh, the auditor's department has had with, with processing out there as well. And we wanted to try to come to a solution that works for everybody. And we think we did. Um, I know there's been some questions, there's going to be some questions from the employees about it. Uh, basically what you're looking at here, what we handed out, reverts the pay period back to, uh, to monthly instead of twice a month. A lot of that decision stemmed from the fact that the more frequently you do payroll, the more work it is for department heads to process out. I know Penny, for one, would definitely like to see monthly payroll again just because they want to work Absolutely, go back for once a month. It's a ridiculous amount of time i got to spend on payroll now. What do the employees want, though? We've already screwed with their pay three times. Most of my guys say one, once a month is what well, they want. Well, I would work for the whole place. What the? I work in the way twice, yeah. Okay. I prefer the twice a month, only because I switched all my bills. Yeah. And that's majority um, of the jail itself is because, you know, we do have a lot. I mean, the whole county does. But what we see just in our department is either the, the dads are trying to bring home one of the family. Um, a lot of us are single with kids. It worked out better every two weeks. You know, if other departments see it differently, you know, that, that would be something you guys would have to take care of. But as far as what we see over at the jail, we'd like to see um, the two weeks stay. I have an employee in my department that says she's got all of her payments switched now. So now it's a matter of having to go back and switch them again. I have the same thing. Both my employees are tired of being messed with with their payroll. Yeah. It's like, look, get it figured out, get it done. We um, just think every two weeks would be better than twice a month. And then going back to every month now, you, the way it's going to fall, you won't end up getting a full paycheck again until the month of April. So there's no way I can do it. I'm a single mom with four kids, letting my kids on my own with no child support. So the anyway. way we were going to have it set up, there would still be two paychecks in January and then it would be on schedule in February. Correct, but if the way it will fall, it won't be a full paycheck till a full month paycheck because but then you're looking to sell them on the 6th, you'll when it's due on the 1st, and all of that kind of stuff. So I'm not sure how that's going to work out. I'm a supporter of two weeks. And I think majority of, uh, like I said, our department is on the two weeks because it has been changed so many times. So you, you fall into getting paid a certain time and then it changes again. And you know, the payments is the biggest thing. You know, people are so used to now paying at a certain time, splitting their check up between those two weeks and then now here we go switching it again. Are you saying every two weeks or are you saying twice a month? Every two weeks. Every two weeks. Because that's, I mean, there's a big difference. Every two weeks, right, Ryan? Would be yeah, the there's, there's not going to be twice a month then. That's what's causing a lot of these Every problems. two weeks or once a month. You know, our main objective here in working through this was to make sure that we're not cutting off pay weeks <coughs> in the middle of the month anymore, which we're going to eliminate regardless. The other objective was to make sure that everybody's getting paid overtime for anything over 40 hours worked in a work week. Those are the two big changes that we've made, uh, and I think that probably satisfies a lot of the jail staff, you know, you know getting that accomplished there. <clears throat> I think those are two of, uh, of your guys' main problems that you're having with, uh, with the way payroll was calculated. And the hours that, the hours that Justin turns in are the hours that we can prove on a time card that we are actually there, we are actually working. We're not screwing with the system, we are there working and we're not even getting paid back. If we work 100 hours, we may get paid for 93. Maybe, sometimes, but we're not only short just the fact of overtime, we're also getting shorted on the hours that we're actually there and we're actually working. That's another big problem. The other discussion that we had is that uh, your time cards won't your actual time cards from your time clock won't be coming up to the auditor's office anymore. We'll go to Justin 
Justin will process it out the same way that Penny does, the same way that I do, and Becky will get those sheets and those will be entered into the payroll system. So uh, there will be no more things getting lost in translation, etc. I have a question, um, and this is probably for Becky. How will you do the vacation and sick leave? Will you do that based on two weeks, or will you do that only once a month? Well, it depends on what the decision is made, because with the way our system operates, two, every two weeks isn't really, it's not set up for that. I've done some, I've done a little bit of looking at the personnel policy and the way that things like longevity and sick and vacation are calculated and, and to do it on a two-week schedule, to accrue it on a two-week schedule, you're going to have to make some modifications. It keeps the general intent of the policy in effect, but to, uh, you will have to modify some of those numbers that are actually listed in the personnel like policy what? right now. What are you talking about? Here, hold on a second. I got that copy up. I marked up copy of what I was thinking before we... <coughs> So we, we would be looking at 26 pay periods a year, right? If you went bi-weekly, and that, that's another problem that's posed, is that every 11 years or so, you have 27 pay periods a year. So you have that extra pay period where you have to make sure that you know it in advance because everybody's, all the salary employees' checks are going to be a little bit less. You'll get paid the same annual amount, but uh, that's just another thing you have to account for if you do it that way. So what are we looking at? Are we looking at 24 pay periods or 26 pay periods? No, it either be 12 or 26. 12 or 26. They're not going to do the twice a month anymore. That's that was a good problem with the jail. So basically, or created a problem with the jail. Basically, if you went to uh, to every two weeks, you'd be looking at. You know, the way longevity is, is paid out could be changed, you know, so basically you're getting, instead of getting the $8 a month for each year of service, you change it to $4 per pay period for each year of service. You know, that, that's a simple change there. The numbers for vacation and sick, uh, instead of 6.75 hours per month, you change it to 3.25 hours per pay period. Right. Uh, or but that's only 6.5, not 6. What was that? What was that, Penny? That's 6.5, not 6.75. 3.25 twice well, a month you have 20, It's not twice a month, though. It's 26 times a year. So we have two more. Oh, say yes. Yeah. It actually adds up being more vacation by a little bit per year. Right. Slightly more. I like think it's like an hour and a half more a year or something like that. And, and down the line, when I was sick, it would end up being 3.75 hours per pay period. That would end up easier to keep track, too. Um, so there's those complicating factors there. And, and like Becky said, the system isn't set up for it right now, which is part of the reason why we looked at uh, going back to a monthly type of payroll so we don't have to change all that stuff and, and don't have to incur that expense that's associated with it. But that's not my decision to make and that's why we put it on the agenda for discussion. I guess Dwayne Moore had it for, I don't know, how many years was he sheriff? But he had to have the same process. I guess I'm not understanding really why it's not working. The way it was. Way, way it was. And I guess, Kyla, I'm not following. Where do you, how do you determine that you're not getting paid for you just the hours that we work? Well, I can show you pay stubs. I know a few of them brought them. Ryan, can you explain a paycheck to <coughs> an employee? Can you specifically explain to them how they get paid? I don't have the information. Do you have the ability to do that, Becky? Explain to them exactly how they get paid. I know how they so get paid. So, did you get explained but, how you got paid last time when you had questions? Kylie? Me? Yes. Um, no. I didn't get That's a direct the answer. And I'm speaking as a person who has employees. Let's take care of the employees. We should be team players. Pay them every two weeks. Um, if we can't explain how we pay people, it's all it's going to do is create problems. And again, people come to me. 
and I don't want to have to deal with that anymore. So let's pay him the easiest way possible and pay him every two weeks. That's my two cents. But Scott, what I was going to say is, last pay period, um, I worked so many hours, and then I called Becky to find out where the rest of my check was, because I was missing, okay, let's say 12 hours. I was missing 12 hours from my last check. I had to call her, and I was nice about it and said I would like my money. I'd like to either add on to my check, or I would like it in a check form. Either way, I, w I would like my money. It's not happened to just me. It happens to people over there quite frequently, where the hours that we're working is not what it says on our check. That's the only time that you came to me about it, and I agreed that one was incorrect. I was not here during that payroll process. I did help with it at home on my couch because I was sick. How many guys trust your paychecks? Entered, how many guys trust your paychecks with the jail? I'm just talking about jail staff. Do you think your paychecks are accurate? Never. No. Ever. There you go. Well, who's it's processing simple. the payroll for the jail? Who processes it's the It's because payroll? we have a different system. They get paid totally different because they're on the law enforcement payroll system, where you don't have to, you have to work more than your 80 hours within a pay period, which we can't explain to them, and that's created the problem. That's what I'm saying. Go to two weeks. Make it simple. We should all be team players. Our goal is to take care of the employees. We're not doing it. Well, and Scott, to, to keep going with this, um, there are a lot of times that Kim can work 80 hours. I can work 83. She's got like 6.5 hours of overtime. I got none. Eddie can work 90 hours and has maybe four hours overtime. I can work 118, and I maybe have five. I would like you to come it's in not and consistent. go over these specific situations. Becky, I'm not going to argue with you. We have went over and over and over, and you show us a schedule book that doesn't make absolutely any sense because we are getting paid, whether it's monthly, every two weeks, but our, our overtime is never follow that paycheck. It's always it's That's what we're trying to change or it so goes back to that. So whenever we work, we have no idea how much overtime we're going to get. That's why this would simplify it, and you would know. Yeah, well, it would, why don't it would be so confusing? Be gone, why don't we know now? You don't come up and look at look Becky, at it. I just look at the book, and then Becky, you get upset, and then you just want to talk to Justin. Yeah, you're not I, approachable. Yeah. I'm sorry. I was not I'm, at work. I'm, okay. The last time, but Becky, you guys, I told you to ask your questions, down. and that's what I, I don't want this to turn into an argument. So please ask your questions. You guys need to decide the issue whether you want to pay. We're going to sit here for an hour arguing, yeah, two weeks or a month. Um, what will it take to go to two weeks? Just ask your question. Our system don't do that. Or it's not really set up for that because of all the insurance and all that stuff. All the All the insurance and the garnishments and protections. I've heard that since I, I come to you. But if you as a staff would like pay two weeks, every two weeks instead of once a month. Uh, what would it take to get set up? I'll have to check with the software programmer. See what we can do. Normally well, we gets paid every two weeks, don't they? I have no clue. Like right now we get paid every two weeks. No, you get well, paid twice, 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 twice a month. Right now. See, and I think in my mind that's where the confusion comes because the pay period is cut off in the middle of you guys' work week. <coughs> yeah. In the middle of your 80 hours, so. Yep, it's not from Sunday to Saturday. That's what we'd like to see is Sunday to Saturday we can keep track of what we're working, how much overtime we're working because it's getting out of control. A Sunday, I mean, a Sunday would, to Saturday would simplify and the payroll can turn in and every, anything over 40 hours is going to simplify it as well when I, when I do it. It would be a lot so easier let's, for everyone Let's understand. eliminate the confusion here regardless of what we do. We're going to a Sunday through Saturday pay week. We're going to anything over 40 hours is paid as overtime. This is a this is a discussion made about the pay frequency, whether it's going to be once a month or every four or five weeks, or if we're going to do it every two weeks. Regardless of what we do, all of these other issues are going by the wayside. Good. Yes. Yes, that's um, what we talked about, and their main issue is that and being paid for the hours that they're there and the overtime is the big thing. But like you said, what we talked about, that should fix it. It'll fix the confusion. 
because we had that discussion. And when, that's the main goal. Yeah, and the only yes. question now then today is just if it's going to be every two weeks or monthly. It appears to me, sitting here, that the employees are like it every two weeks, the department heads is like it once a month. I don't know, you have what? How many employees do you have, Penny? One. One and one with me. I think some of my guys, are, you know, I have some one way, some the other way, so it's kind of tough for me. It doesn't make much difference personally, but I, you know. I think I've only got one that likes the every two weeks, or whatever you want to call it. Twice a month before we're getting paid now. But many of them have said, why don't we just go back to once a month and then I don't have to bug them weekly for. I don't think any of the jail staff want to go to once a month. Any of you jail staff want to go to once a month? Let's take care of the employees. We have a hard enough time keeping jail staff. Let's push this through and get it done. Okay, our thing is either once a month or, or 20. 26 pay periods. Can I have a motion for I so move for the 26 pay periods. Okay, Jim Howe. 26 pay periods. Any second? For every two weeks. Okay, for every two weeks. I just have a question. Would it? 24. No, 26. 26. Oh, in some years it's going to be 27. Every 11 or 12 years it'll be 26. We don't have to worry about that right now. Right, not right now. Would, would it be would it be a fair um, to say to ask all most of the employees what they want first, or do you want to just so that everyone else is included to what kind of just to get their idea? Or I'm thinking this needs to be done now, now. not in a month or two from now. How long is it going to take to kill with the software to get it set up properly? I can call her today. See what all it will take. I think it'll take two weeks to get it set up or? I don't know. I'll we'll have to find out what all it's going to take. Hopefully not. Okay, the motion is the need to go to every two weeks. Can I have a second? I'll second. Okay. Motion has been made and seconded to go to every two weeks. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. Nay. <clears throat> Four approved and one nay. Uh, nay. Okay. Now it's the executive session. Who calls for that? I think that was just taken care of. It was taken care of? Right. I will bring a, I'll, I'll put personnel policy on the next agenda. We can make the modifications in the personnel policy to, to put that payroll schedule into effect. Okay. Okay, I'll, I'll make that motion to go into different session. Motion has been made to go into executive session. Go second. Second. Who do you want in here? All those in favor of going into executive session say aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. Okay, number 22, consider motion to transfer uh, record 8118, block 6, lot 6, block 22, original plot of Lowry, South Dakota, Lowry Prim, uh, Pilgrim Community Church, as South Dakota can codified laws, 72926. I so move. All right. Could we just hand it over? Is yep. it going to be a $1? It'll say one dollar in valid consideration, but there's going to be any money exchange here. Okay. And we're going to quit claim it to them. Second. No second. Okay. Motion has been made and second to uh, uh, give Lowry Pil Pilgrim our community church that section down there, Lowry. <coughs> All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. Okay. New business. I have just a question, Josh. Um, when your claims came in that Tahoe had on there to fill up the jail, is mm -hmm. that correct? Yes. Okay. So it's going to come out of the jail budget. 
Yep, that's where it's utilized. So. Any other remember? Yeah. I had a call up only from the city of Hope the other day wanting to know if we are interested in sharing a police officer. I've had uh, one from Campbell County come and Potter County has talked to me about it. But I told him I would bring it up. I don't know how we can share a police officer with the city of Hope. In my mind, they should share it with Potter County if they want to share one. Yeah, that's in that county. Yeah. They're, they were gonna, they have a meeting tonight, and uh, I told them I'd bring it up. I don't know if I'll get down there to it or not, but well, we, can, we can sure discuss it. But I know. I don't know that we want to start sharing. Law how do we, like, how do we share our, our sheriff's department with the police department? We couldn't really, could we? I don't see how we could. I think we will, number one. I mean, we got responsibility for a small portion of it, anything on the north side of Highway 20 down there. Yeah. I mean, we've gone into Holden to help Kurt with a couple things, but on Lawrence, but I, I don't know how that would work. Yeah. That would be, the easiest would just be go through Kurt. Yeah. The That's majority the of the city, sure. That's the majority of the, of the city itself is in Potter County. So we just have the, the complex and the airport and the swimming pool that consists of everything to the north there. So. But I told him I'd mention it, and uh, they have a young man in mind. He, I don't think he's graduated from college yet in law or in criminal justice, but I think he wants more money than what they're willing to pay. Oh, so they want, the issue is. So they want us to help out. That's what they would like to see. I yes. wondered if it, but I don't know how we could do that. You're going to stir up a lot of problems with Potter County Sheriff's Office, don't yeah. you think? If we're going to say, yeah, we'll pick you up, what do you think? I, I would think we should be asking yeah. Potter County yeah. to start yeah. off with. Start off and with you have legal issues too. Yeah. You're dealing with a whole other jurisdiction, a whole other county. Yeah. So I got to tell them you're not, you're not interested. Well, he kind of got that point, but I told him I'd mention it. And <laughs> well, that's my, that's my I told him I thought he'd just send on to Kurt down there, the Potter County Sheriff, if they want to share law enforcement and work, work their deal out down there. So, anyway, that's all I had. Any other new business? I have a couple of things. Um, in my office, I'd like to have it okay if we can start working comp time now until sometime in March. <coughs> We're going to get busy. They don't, they're not asking for overtime. They're happy to settle the contract. Okay. Do we need a motion for that then? Does that just with the employee handbook at all, right? Or can we do that? I think it's. How much is It doesn't really business. specify whether or not we need a motion, right? I'll probably be working um, 10 hour days. No penny asked for comp time last meeting for your guys too. At least ten hour days till after the notices go out and those local boards are done. And Stephanie will probably get work an extra five hours a week and Greg two and a half. I don't have any trouble with it. Um, The other thing I have is um, about local boards, and um, I talked to people from the city of Mobridge, and the question is, how are you going to do it? How so they can see the properties, get them the cards, all that kind of stuff. This is so new for me that I didn't even think of it. But if I get a laptop and a projector. I can go to Selby, go to Mobridge, come in here, call them up on the web Beacon website, and project whatever I'm looking at on the website onto a screen or the wall. So there's no actual cards going back and forth or anything like that. So I got an estimate from Ultra for the laptop, the screen, 
chords, everything that's involved in it. And it'll be a, um, a, about somewhere between $2,000 and $2,500. And that, that laptop that they're talking about is a Surface Pro, they call it. So that laptop is also compatible with Vanguard remote access. So if we're going to go out and look at certain properties, I can download them from Vanguard to the laptop. And we can go look. We can change a sketch. We can change, put in notes, do whatever, come back, load it back into Vanguard. Connecting Point was the company you're talking to, wasn't that? Yeah, Vanguard? that's okay. who does. I have all my hardware through Connecting Point. That's who does our Ultra software. If you hear us talk about Ultra, that's who does that, the software for most of the stuff that we do here. And so I've always gone through them for the hardware too. So then how is that going to work then? Is something you're going to have to sit there and you're going to have to be there during the whole time while they're... If they want me there. That's, you know, that's up to them. I would suggest that anyway. That I'm more than willing to do that. Yeah. If, if, they, if they don't want me there, that's fine. I, I'm not going to bully my way in, but I, I will be there if they want me there. Anyway, when we first started talking about it, I'm just racking my brain thinking, how can we do this until all of a sudden the light came on and I can access it on the website. Anything that, like I print out for you guys every year, all stacks of paper, I can put right on that screen. How much did you say, Doug? It'll be between 2000 and 2500 would you use that for us then too? I, yeah, I can. Either way you want it. With you guys, I can do the copies because um, we usually have enough days ahead of time that I can get those made. Or we can do it that way or we can do both. Will that show light comparisons? So this property is compared to these two or three other properties? Yeah, I can call up anything they want to look at so we can say, yeah, this is comparable, or it's not, or, yeah. You mean like as far as the size and, and all that? that You'd just be able to project the database yeah. of all the cards through the computer onto a screen. So if <coughs> you were so valuing Deb Call's house and said, what's Jamie Harris? She can just type in my legal, not legal, but I could do it by name. By name now? Okay. I can. And just pop it up on the screen. So would you have to do all that printing then still or not? Not unless they wanted it. I know I'd prefer the printed part. I can sure I can more than order. happy more than happy to do those two. That's if if people don't want them I I wouldn't print them, but if you want them, I don't have a problem doing that. Either I know way, it's a lot of paper and everything, but I guess I like seeing it. Yeah. Wait for you know what? I kind of, I'm kind of that way myself. <laughs> I print out a lot of stuff I pro could probably just look at, but I'd rather have the paper. So, yeah. Either either way, however you want it, I'm more than willing to do it for you. But I just thought that would make the easiest transition for Selby and Mobridge for these local boards. Because you know, the only other thing I could think of is they would have to tell me ahead of time who all was appealing and I would then just end up with those cards over there or I would have to sit here on the phone with them and look stuff up and do it through email and phone or something. So that's how come I came up with this I think it'd be a good idea. Right here. So do I. <clears throat> do we have a captain motion for that? I don't know. I don't. If I it's think budget, I just need budget. Budget. If you have money in your budget, you don't need to. I, well, I didn't actually budget for it, but I can make room for it somewhere. Okay. I'll just make room for it. Do you think you'll have? Think you went over budget then or not? I don't think so, because I think I can cover it with some training. Some training 
hours with Vanguard, I think I can cover it that way. So worst case scenario would be just a budget supplement. Mm -hmm. with yeah, absolutely. This year, I I should have done it. I should have done it already. I have plenty of But I didn't think about it. <laughs> I'm not used to having that on the website yet, so I, it just didn't occur to me. To you can't go back and get it out of last year's budget, can we? No. <laughs> I don't think I can get my, I don't think I can get anything post-dated that far back now, so. And I don't, did you, about the comp time, did we need a motion on that or, no? Okay. So I'm okay yeah. on both things? Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else in the room? Can I have a motion to adjourn? Okay, I got one thing. Do we want you and I were talking a little bit before the meeting with regard to the individual that we removed from his property in Selby. Um, he's been sleeping in his car and things like that. It's not really a county issue. Um, also, he has contacted Walworth County with regard to. Um, funds. Um, there's certain hoops that he has to jump through and he has chosen not to do that. Basically go to the Department of Social Services, fill out some applications due to the fact that he is on a uh, limited income to see if he qualifies. He is not eligible to apply to Walworth County for uh, indigent fundings or poor relief until he's done that. Um, so if you get any people asking why we're not trying to help him or whatever, he has to make that first step. We have told him that several times, um, and some of you Selby people may be getting, why aren't you helping this guy out or whatever, because he is sleeping in his car. But um, we have tried everything to help the individual. He just chooses not to help himself. Um, I paid for a room, Sheriff paid for a room, I think the Ministerial Association helped and he just keeps continuing to not help himself. We cannot force him to help himself, and we have to draw the line somewhere, so. He, he may have gone to social services because we had a call about did he own any property. Okay, good. Because so last time we checked, lately? Uh, last week. Okay, because last week when we checked, he hadn't, so. Usually they don't call unless they've been contacted okay. by well, a We'll follow that up today, so hopefully yeah. he will have taken those steps because. Yeah, so yeah, and that's why I wanted to get it out because I'm sure <coughs> Commissioner Miller may get something from people. It's like, why are you guys not helping this person or whatever, or when you're around Selby or whatever. So, um, but he's got to take the work to help himself. And realistically, he's probably going to be able to qualify for aid once he comes in and fills out that paperwork. But until he signs his name and brings in Social Security number, things like that, there's nothing Social Services can do or sign him up for. How old is he? 50s maybe? Yeah, late 50s. Uh, it's hard to tell. Late 50s. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I know. He's. Yeah. I'm there. <laughs> <laughs> he was out of school when I was there. I, he's got he's older than Greg. Mm How -hmm. old is Greg? 58. 57. He's a couple years older than Greg. So I just wanted to give you FYI on that because. He may still be in his car a month from now, but that's his choice. So, um, and there isn't much we can do about it, unfortunately. So, just I think it was very kind of you and the sheriff to pay for a room for him at all. Well, it, never mind. That's where you want to leave that. That's right. That's right. I will leave it there. But just an FYI, so you guys are aware, because you may get, like I said, you've been jumped several times about it because you live here. So that way everyone knows what's going on.